or about our primitive ancestors in this part of subcontinent, the Indian subcontinent, does not go beyond Mohanjodoro or Harappa. The localities which are now in Pakistan. There are evidences now that our ancestors evolved in this part of the land and this part of the country, this part of the state, in our river, one of the most sacred rivers, that is Narmada. Humans must have evolved, might have evolved in Africa, as has been proved by the number of human fossil bones discovered so far in Africa, maybe 18 lakh year old. But when this species spread it throughout the world, it established several regional centers. One, one of them was in India. So we have been able to discover the first and oldest human fossil of this subcontinent from a small village called Hathnara, falling in the Sihar district of Madhya Pradesh, somewhat 80 kilometers southeast of Bhopal. It's a well-studied fact that the humans evolved in East Africa some 18 lakh year old ago. That time, after the establishment of species Homo erectus, they must have spread it throughout the world. And India was not an exception. And this particular discovery of the human fossil from Hathnora in Narmada Valley proves it, that man did not migrate from any part of the world to India. They classification or so to say precisely zoological classification we the humans of modern days are classed as homo sapiens 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 means intelligent homo means man so we have been classed as homo sapiens we have evolved from our primitive ancestors who are known as homo erectus homo erectus uh, were actually the humans which could first stand erect and balance their neck on the spine. They were known as Homo erectus because they could stand erect and they could walk on two legs which gave rise to bipedalism. That means they could walk freely on two legs and their hands were thus made free for any other manipulation or activities. We humans are, as per the zoological classification, are put in the animal group of primates. Primates are actually those animals which have retained the most primitive characters. Amongst the primates, we get lorries, tertiaries, apes and men also the monkeys. Apes are our nearest real relatives biologically. So to imagine human evolution or the evolution of the primates as such, let us imagine a tree, a tree with branches going upwards. So first from this particular stem of primates, the monkeys separated out. You know, monkeys, as you know, have tails and claws. In subsequent times, the apes separated from the stock of primates. Apes include orangutan, chimpanzee, gorilla. So, somehow these apes are confined to either Africa or Southeast Asia. In subsequent time, say about 4 million years ago, humans separated from the primate stock. So that is why the humans are closer to the primates. 
So, the major evolution actually we find lot of evidences in Africa, particularly the East Africa, where human and pre-human fossils that means relics of bones preserved in rocks have been discovered. In Africa, humans as old as human fossils as old as 18 lakh year old have been found from old gods and some other areas. Subsequently, after the stabilization of the species, this particular variety which was known as Homo erectus spreaded throughout the world and this confined to some centers in Europe, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Eastern China and India too. Homo erectus appears to have evolved from Australopithecus. Australopithecus actually evolved about 4 million years ago and the major difference which the Australopithecus had with the Homo erectus that the Australopithecus did not have speech because there was no development of the chin in the Australopithecus. So, this chin particularly which we find in humans is a evidence of evolvement of speech. So, the Homo erectus had the development of chin, so it could speak whereas the Australopithecus it had all the physiological qualities which the Homo erectus possessed, but it could not speak. Out of the gracile variety of the Australopithecus it appears that the Homo erectus evolved. In course of evolution, things change not drastically, but gradually, sometimes punctuated with some other developments. So, with evolution, certain changes are brought about. Actually, this can be told that those changes also tell you how you are different from the nearest species. So, if we say how we are the humans are different from the apes and that splitting of lineage carried forward in time and brought us to this stage in course of evolution following I should say these changes were brought in which could be listed as first and foremost is the enlargement of brain. How it happened? In fact, all apes are quadruples, but humans are biped. This bipedalism, this particular faculty, this phenomena gave rise to the most important development in evolution, human evolution is that we got prehensile hands that were free for manipulation of activities. So, that manipulation exerted pressure on our brain and it had to grow. Body could produce the same mass of bone to form a skull. So, initially the human skull was having very thick bones. The skull was flat and it was slightly tapering upwards. With the evolution the same skull had to accommodate a larger brain. So, gradually the human skull grew bulbous. So, our forehead which was slanting similar to our similar to the apes or gently sloping forwardly like apes became gradually vertical. Thus all happened by the sides and back parts of the skull. The occipital hole which connects the spine to the skull now with the evolution connects in the middle of the skull. So, that gave rise to perfect balancing of the skull on the spine. Our four limbs hands I should say grew slightly smaller, our thumb 
went closer to the fingers for a better grip that you do not find in apes or monkeys. Our lower vertebrae became more strong, our pelvic became broader to keep the baby for 9 months and that's how the developments evolved. Actually this all began with the theory propagated by Charles Darwin in the British uh, nature uh, scientists that when he told that man evolved from man and apes and monkeys, we all evolved from a common ape. So, uh, uh, he actually wrote a book on the origin of species and this particular theory was part of that. And uh, uh, he told that uh, now we should be able to find the bones which could conclusively prove that uh, the apes and men had a common ancestor. That means you find a human skeleton or skull which has characters of both. So many people were very much impressed, particularly Thomas Huxley propagated this particular theory. So one uh, Dutch doctor by name Eugene Duba, it was this story goes um, in 1859 or so. There was one Dutch doctor Eugene Duba by name and uh, he was very much impressed by the, he was a physician. So he was very much impressed uh, by the theory given by Darwin and he wanted to virtually get those particular relics. So Darwin had told that Africa is the best place because in the middle latitudes, zero latitudes where the climate is slightly warmer, man is little warm loving animal, there the chances of getting the fossils of man are more. But uh, Africa was not practically accessible in those days. So he went to, to he joined the American army and then went towards Indonesia. This was actually the Dutch colony. So knowing his passion for collection of bones, his colleagues let him free for locating, searching the human bones, which could link the man and apes. Luckily, in 1892, he could discover some human bones, particularly the skull, straight femur, he could locate and that had the characters both of man as well as the apes. This was in 1892 or so. Later on, he continued his activities. but before going to Indonesia and before returning back from Indonesia to Netherlands, Eugene Duba did not forget to pass via India because he had earlier heard that India was the cradle of man and it had a highly developed society in earlier times. So he could not resist going by India. But he went via foothills of the Himalayas and after getting the human fossils in Indonesia, he returned back by the same route and after reaching Indonesia, Netherlands, he declared that the oriental myth that the India was cradle of man is now thrashed because he could find the missing link. link which could connect the man with the primitive apes or because the fossil of common ancestor he had already found. This is mentioned in a book by Hakleka in 1930 published in Smithsonian Institute. After this, these particular discoveries which were the first discoveries of human fossils in the world. It so happened that a human fossil was discovered in the Narmada Valley 
almost in the same year. But somehow this was subsequently lost and it could not be described neither it could be photographed. So, we do not have uh, anything, any information about that particular fossil. In 1923 or so, then uh, the human fossils were discovered in China. There is an interesting story that some medicines uh, were being prepared after grinding some uh, uh, teeth. So, one tourist asks where from the medicines you get. Then one Chinese took him to some caves near Beijing and there he found that oh they are the bones and tools and molars of primitive men. So, that is how the Peking man was discovered. They were younger than in age compared to the Indonesian ones. Indonesian humans were about 10 to 12 lakh year old and the Chinese were 6 to 7 lakh year old. Then the story continued, the uh, story of discovery continued in Europe also. Europeans felt why human fossil have not been located in Europe, is close to Africa. So, then in the first half of the 20th century, there were many discoveries, let us say from Heidelberg in Germany, Arago in France. So, there were many discoveries of human fossils from Europe, but the Europeans kept their identity, they wanted to keep their identity separate. So, those that particular subspecies of man was named as Neanderthal because the first fossil of Europe of early man was found in Germany in Neander Valley. The Africa and Asia are known as old world continents and America, Australia they are known as Antarctica etc. new world continents. So, surprisingly there are no human fossils practically in the new world. America, South America, North America as well as the Australia, particularly North America and South America are devoid of any human fossil. In Australia however, some human fossils have been found which are 40 to 45,000 year old. The Indian subcontinent is having many river valleys and many river valleys are full of Paleolithic implements dating to middle or lower Paleolithic times. But this is an agony that uh, the man who created them, who made these Paleolithic tools, we do not get any fossil of the man. So, I was assigned a topic for collecting the bones and fossils of the quaternary mammals that is the mammals which used to live in the central part of Narmada valley uh, between 5 to 15 lakh year old period to collect their fossils and classify them. So, during that process of collection of fossils I was highly demoralized when after reaching Hoshangabad and taking traverses in the surrounding areas, I did not come across any fossil. Well, in the literature of course, I was reading a lot about the fossil localities and I came across a name Hathnara. So, I guessed Hath means Hathi, Nara means face. So, I must get some fossil of elephant in this particular village which is situated on the northern bank of Narmada. So, when I reached the village, I inquired the villagers as we generally do, do we get the bones of old animals here? Then a man came forward and told what to talk of animals, we get lot many bones of the mans also. So, I was very much happy that I may be able to discover the first human fossil of the subcontinent from this village. So, later on I was told that poor people are buried in the sand 
they are not cremated properly. So when there is the animal scavenge their flashes of those dead bodies and bones are all about. So when uh, these skulls are found, some people try to cook rice, etc., in those empty skulls to get extra energies. So that was a sort of just story. Anyway, I was moving towards the quaternary gravels, I mean the s cemented sort of um, gravel bed of the quaternary period in the Narmada river channel. So I could locate a very big horn core and then started excavating and to my amazement I got a very beautiful skull of a, of a uh, bovid, a cattle. I uh, kept the laborers engaged in excavating and I had a leisure time to move about in the on the gravel platform of the river. It was very cool and peaceful time of course of the winter at about 12 o'clock and I could look at a circular bony object about uh, 8 or 10 inches in diameter and very thick. Uh, and then I could it just click to my mind that it has to be a human fossil skull. So, before the uh, villagers could get alert, generally what they were doing, if they get some bone, they will crush it. So, I avoided excavating that because I thought I may not be able to excavate this bone by the evening. So, I sat on this spot for a couple of hours and left the place. Next early morning, I came with many laborers and with picking tools and started excavating a sort of trench about a meter apart in a circular form away from the skull. With the vibration of those tools, the skull, human skull just came up. Oh, it was delight. It was the light of the life that when I lifted the block, it was substantial it formed substantial part of a human skull, primitive human skull. It was uh, taken to laboratory in Nagpur. It was very carefully cleaned grain by grain, but we did not disturb the inner cavity of the skull uh, because if we clean that the skull will crumple. So then after studies we came to know it had sloping forehead, broader base. The skull bone was three times thicker than the modern man and the internal cranial capacity was two third. Modern man has got 1500, 1450 to 1500 cubic centimeter uh, cranial capacity that we measure with the help of uh, the rye grains or uh, mm, water generally not used, but we use rye grains for measuring the internal cavity. The eyebrow ridges are massive like telescope and uh, it has got wider eyes, wider ear hole. So these faculties were much more developed during those times. So then the study is were com carried out comparing the Namda skull with the ones found in Africa, Europe, Asia, China and Indonesia. So, we came to know that uh, this particular Narmada human fossil skull, Homo erectus skull is closer in characters with uh, the South Asian counterparts from Indonesia or to some extent China, but it differed little bit from the human fossils found in Africa and Europe. So, the most important point here is the strategic and critical location of the Ramada human fossil that it is located midway on the globe between the African and European human fossil localities towards the west and Chinese 
and Indonesian human fossil localities to the east. So, if someone wants to correlate the human fossil evolution from east to west, nobody can ignore India. Now, I have been generally asked how old is the strata from which this fossil has been excavated. So, the peculiarity with this fossil is that its dating cannot be wrong because we have excavated it in situ from as it was embedded in the rock. So, we have got two bases. We cannot use carbon dating because it has got its own limitations of 40,000 years. Uh, we did not get any material on the basis of which we could uh, uh, do uranium thorium dating. But we have got two tools in our hand. One is faunal, other is the paleomagnetic. The stegodons, the long tusked elephants and the susnomadicus, a variety of pig, they uh, existed up to the middle Pleistocene. Say to say, they, they are the primitive animals, but they were never found in the, during the period after uh, 6 lakh years or 5 lakh years. So, that is one basis and another one is that the layer just below the uh, layer in which the human fossil was found known as Dhansi formation, it has got magnetic polarity reversal. So, that is dated around 0.76 million years that is 7 lakh 60 thousand years. So, keeping the gap for uh, the erosion of the upper bed, the Narmada fossil can be located, can be dated around 6 to 7 lakh years old. I can quote uh, Dr. Sankalia and Dr. Vakankar, who once said that we have been getting Paleolithic tools and tools, but now the discovery of human fossil in the subcontinent has held our head high because now we know the shape of man who made these Paleolithic tools. So, it takes time, longer time to establish such type of discoveries. When you say it has happened, uh, it is very difficult to get the recognition and uh, it is actually the work of younger generation to get into the river valleys whenever they go on traverses, walk around and discover more and more human fossils with their enthusiasm. If I am able to discover a human fossil in the Indian subcontinent, the younger generation can discover so many.